On this week's Ritual Misery podcast, Kent lets his fingers do the walking. Uh, Amos has some helping hands. Uh, and uh, it helped me find your kingdom on Netflix. And also we have Crunchy. What? Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 202 for Wednesday the 13th of February. Yes, I said Wednesday the 13th of February 2019 because Kent didn't want to do a Valentine's Day stream. He doesn't love you guys as much as I do. I'm Amos, that's Kent, and this is a show where we, we're two lifelong friends and our guests celebrate all things geek. I'm flipping it all around because Kent's a shithead. <laughs> as predicted in the pre-show. Um, I, I do want to point out that M-Beam in the chat says that Amos is soft and Kent is hot. I, I think that's uh, that's pretty standard. Uh, together we make a really good cookie. <laughs> How are you, Crunchy? <laughs> I'm doing all right. <laughs> My drugs aren't here yet. Uh, yeah, that, um, <laughs> oh, right, uh, yeah. For, for those just catching in and not watching live, uh, Crunchy's drugs might be arriving any moment now, so she might have to skedaddle doodle out, out for a few minutes. Um, meanwhile, we're going to hang out. Crunchy, you've been up to a lot of stuff, a lot of cool stuff. You've been been uh, uh, making things. You've actually not, not just like making podcasts where people get to laugh at, at you and your comments, but actual things people can use, and we'll get to that here in a little bit. Sounds amazing to me. Oh, it uh -oh. is. Um, hey Kent, uh, you got in here the phone book. That's really, really helpful. I didn't even bother clicking the link because I didn't want to be bored to death. So why don't you uh, uh, explain to us why this is worthy of talking about for your weekly recap? Yeah. So last week we talked about Jenny Josephson's new podcast that she does with and about her dad, Larry Josephson, mm -hmm. who's kind of a, a legend in public radio. Mm-hmm. And I started. Uh, not not only have I caught up on the podcast, but I was I've been reading Jenny's blog and just kind of catching up on all things Josephson. And I kind of did a bit of a deep dive into the Radio Foundation, which is Larry's organization. Mm -hmm. And I found this public radio project called the Phone Book, and it's based on the old adage: she could read the phone book and make it sound like Hamlet. Uh, of course, referring to you know pe people with with very nice sounding voices, you know, you could just, you know, like Morgan Freeman, for example, I could mm. just, I could listen to that guy literally read the phone book and it would be a wonderful, pleasant experience. They did a project where they got some of the best actors in the English language to read white pages and, uh, <laughs> uh drug side effects and all sorts of boring sounding things. And it is the most entertaining thing i did this week probably by far my favorite and we're gonna have a link in the show notes the 13th item on the list is john lithgow reading a list of shakespearean insults and it's I'm john three lithgow minutes with insults from shakespeare your horrid image doth unfix my hair you're like the toad ugly and venomous you are an index and prologue to the history of lust and foul thoughts. You are a foul defacer of God's handiwork. You witch, you rag, you baggage, you polecat, you runyon. <laughs> so that goes on for three minutes. And that's one of many uh, free tracks that are on this website. It's the phonebook.info. If you want to check it out for yourself, highly, highly recommend it. That is astounding. I like it. Uh, I see uh, Garrison Keillor on here. Uh, Dick Cavett. Um, yeah, quite a few people on here. Alec Baldwin does several. This, oh, I've uh, heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there, there's quite a bit here. And uh, these are just the free ones. There's like you can buy collections of this. Oh, and, my gosh. Uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. That sounds awesome. Um, I also listened to something this week. Metallica's got a new album out as of one February. It's called Helping Hands Live and Acoustic at the Masonic. It's several Metallica songs, some other songs. I think they do some like uh, Danzig and uh, Deep Purple. Um, it's all acoustic. 
even the songs that they do that are their own, they do a spin on it. Like you wouldn't recognize um, uh, Inner Sandman, even though you've heard it 10 million times, but the way that they do it is just completely different. Um, I really enjoyed it, but then I'm also the, the guy that really loved S&M. So, mm. yeah. Okay. I might check it out. Yeah, I doubt it. You probably won't. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm a, I'm a huge Metallica fan, or well, I mean, kind of, historically. Um, I, yeah, I didn't even know this was coming out. I didn't either. I, I actually went to listen to Metallica on uh, my uh, Alexa thing, whatever, Echo. There we go. Not Yeah. I went to go listen to my Echo while I was doing dishes, and the sound wasn't coming through very good because it normally doesn't. And I wanted to really crank it up, but uh, my sister-in-law was sleeping, so I put my headphones in, it told my phone to play some, and um, I was like, wait a second, there's, there's shit on here that I haven't heard. So I went and found it, and it just came out a couple weeks ago, and it's fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Crunchy, are you a Metallica fan? No, <laughs> I am the opposite. Um, I don't like them at all. What's S and M? Symphony and Metallica. It was a, it was an album they put out in 1997, I believe, or 98. That had old. yes, had them uh, had them at, uh, performing with the San Francisco Philharmonic Orchestra, um, uh, uh, led by Michael Kamen. And it was fantastic. It was a lot of Metallica songs, a couple new ones, uh, but mostly old stuff done with the symphony. And it was fantastic. I really enjoyed that as well. Yeah, it was. S&M I mean, it has get- a completely different meaning for me. Yes. And that's why it's called S&M, not Symphony and Metallica. Right. Yep. <laughs> oh, it's intentional. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, that's false advertising. <laughs> I don't know. It depends on what you're signing up for. Uh, uh, speaking of which, what has your week been like? I'm offended. That's what you think my week was like. Are you, though? Um, I, haven't gone to, I haven't done a goddamn thing this week. I guess a little over a week ago. No, my week... You know, I haven't done a goddamn thing this week. <laughs> it, it, it's almost like she didn't expect the question. Right. So <laughs> you, didn't do anything, you didn't do anything cool this week, but what is the most recent, like, cool story, crunchy adventure? Uh, um, according to M-Beam, the, the thing that she did this week was her hair. Ah. Okay. Yeah. He said I mean, she, got her, she got her hair yeah. done since last I seen, so... Um, Surprise! This is gonna blow y'all's minds. Is that is that this fresh is out of shower? I always put in a ponytail because I hate this fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Oh, You're probably the only one. I think it's a good look. I don't like the curly hair. It's never even. Like I let it down today because it is, and that's like a miracle that'll happen every like once every five years. So, yeah. Well, there gotcha. you have it. Yeah. So, uh, t- so tell us Not about this. <laughs> tell us about this Alita experience. Okay. First of all, so, what's Alita? Isn't that like a beer or no? That's a beta. Uh, is it? Is it a, a dog <laughs> that's food? That's a sour beer, right? I don't know. So, I'm I'm assuming this is the Battle Angel movie that's forthcoming. See? He knows what's up. He knows it. Um, yeah, which is funny because I don't watch movies, so I wouldn't have known. Um, but one of my coworkers, like, really wants to see this movie, like, and has for, like, 10 years before they even, like, made it because the people from Avatar were gonna, they made a sort of announcement that he sort of knew about. Anyways, so he wants to see this movie because he's all into sci-fi and stuff, and I don't know what it is, but there was, like, a thing in honor of the movie that was coming to three cities in the United States. It's, like, New York City and LA and Austin. And that's like super exclusive. And I like doing things I've never done before, right? And I saw like the design for it and it looks super cool. So he's like, I need someone to go with me. And I'm like, I'll go, I got you. And then we force his brother to come. So, and this is a, with us. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's like a pop up. It's like a pop-up, and they advertised it as like a pop-up escape room, which it kind of wasn't. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. It was more like a, a pop-up, like, 
like board game. Okay, so you would go do the different <laughs> activities and challenges and puzzles, and you would get points for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And well, actually, backtrack because I was a little disappointed with the activities because it was so clearly aimed for little children, which is fine, except that before you did those activities, they forced you to sit in their bar for an hour, which is clearly not centered around children. Uh, <laughs> okay. But they're like, they're like, this is our bar. And here you're going to meet with your other teammates that you didn't bring. You're going to gather information. You're going to find clues and you're going to make a strategy. You're going to plan. You're also going to buy some of our beer, which is $10 a can. Cause we want to make some fucking money. Um, so we did that for an hour. Mm. Uh, their Can't, beer um, was pomegranate and lime. I don't know if that sounds good to you guys. No, not really. No, uh, Can't. Um, how many? How many ten dollar beers can you drink in an hour? Uh, how much money do I have? <laughs> it do, I, I don't think it matters. I think the answer is still the same. Um, probably one. One. Yeah, exactly. It's that's because it's probably the drink minimum. <laughs> It's and, and not even that. Like you can't not have a beer, uh, right. but right. I'll, I'll be damned if I've ever seen you pay more than ten bucks for a beer, and certainly not do it yeah. twice. Well, I mean, it's got to be a really special beer. I mean, I've gone to craft beer stores where I've spent you know twelve, fifteen dollars for a bottle of beer, but it's something that's you know some massive, it, fairly. Exclusive. It was very special beer. It was made just for the movie and just for this escape room. So it was only in three cities. For like two months. Right, right. But, so still, my answer is one. <laughs> <laughs> or if yeah, they have too. two different kinds, I may, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do one each. R right. Definitely not more than one of the same one, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not, not unless you drink it and like it gives you a, an internal prostate massage. Like it's got to be really, really <laughs> special. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's that, right? Oh, my gosh. Can we invent so, that? An internal you are a genius. I yes, I just don't know how to get there. I I can see the goal. I can see the light at the top of the stairs. I don't know how many steps there are though. You're the idea man. Yeah, exactly. That's <laughs> that's what I do. Once it comes time to actually execute the ideas, then I start falling short. But then, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, you you've been to South by Southwest live with Rich and Misery. You know how well I I, I prepare. <laughs> BD King nine oh nine says guys. Pro Sprout. I have a bone to pick with you. In, in a minute, I'll tell you after this. Um, so anyways, we went and played the games, and they were too easy, and we fucking rocked that shit. We were in, like, the top place the entire time for the whole hour. And at the end, everybody comes together, and we watch a round of motorball, which is essentially, like, a race. It's just, it's, it's horse races, except they're not horses. They're mechanical people cars. Um <laughs> But <laughs> but you bet on them, and like like I said, everything was super easy, so there was a really obvious choice. But like the one girl who was deciding everything because it was her birthday was like, no, too obvious. We're not doing that one. We're doing the other recently upgraded one. So we're the only people that lost, and we lost everything, and we went negative, and we went from first place to last place in half a second. So... There's that. Oh my gosh. So so what did the winners receive? You got a commemorative coin. Ah, okay. All right. Which is not a big deal, but my coworker keeps saying we're going to go back cuz we got fucked out of the commemorative coin and he wants it. So <laughs> go buy more $10 beers for a commemorative coin. <sighs> yeah. yeah. Not so much. Like I'm not going to lie, the beer wasn't bad to me. It was a sour beer which I don't have a problem with. I think it tastes better than like an IPA. Mm. But it yes. was $10. That's, so That's another way that we are different. <laughs> I would mm -hmm. I would pay $10 for an IPA uh way before I I paid a dollar for a sour beer. It's because you're gross and you're a shithead. <laughs> and there Look, we go. I played. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh my gosh. So have oh. you guys heard of this this new show on Netflix called Kingdom? Heard of it? Yes. Any experience with it? Nay. It is really, really good. It's a it's a a fairly short limited series. It's only six episodes long. Each episode is like just shy of an hour. It's like fifty three minutes or something a piece. Okay. And it takes place in medieval Korea. So the the basic premise of the movie 
is that the king of the kingdom of, of Korea uh, comes down with smallpox. There's a there's a plague of smallpox uh, running through the kingdom, and the king gets sick. So they bring in this doctor to help, and the king actually dies, but the doctor has some kind of like herb that he found that can bring people back to life. Mm-hmm. But come back to life, they're not quite the same. They're basically zombies. Mm. And uh, one thing leads to another, and now there's a zombie plague. Yet this is like historically accurate f- period fiction taking place in, I think, like 17 or 1800s Korea. And it's fascinating. I'm f- I've am i finished four episodes so far out of the six, and I cannot wait to see how it concludes. It is so good. <laughs> Um, I, I'm, I'm in this, so I got, I got that HD home run last week and I gotta say that I just haven't watched any TV at all. <laughs> you got a fancy new toy to watch TV and have not watched any TV. I, I've got been, uh, look man, retirement is hard and I've, I've not even been doing anything. I just, I like just, just trying to catch up on the honey do list and the don't forget to do list and the mountain do list. Like it, ah. it's, it's really, uh, gosh, man, I just haven't had time. So I've got this toy that I've got like three days left to take back to Best Buy if I don't like it. And I haven't played with it at all. <laughs> we are okay. so unhelpful. Cause you're like talking about all of this and I'm like, I watched something once. <laughs> <laughs> Squid in the chat says 4K TVs are for porn. Yes, because uh, the chat room has already decided that your 4K TV is designed specifically for porn. I watch porn. <gasps> yeah? Well, there you go. Yeah. What's, what's the best porn you've seen lately? Oh, I have a favorite. Yeah? Forever and always. Oh, a- a- is it readily available? Can we share this? Is this something we can let people know what it's called? Yeah, sure. Or? Well, they're all readily available. If you go to yourporn.sexy, you can see pretty much the full version of almost any porn ever. There's a lot of advertisements, but it's it's worth it because you can download them too. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe a link in the show notes? <laughs> Undecided so far. I, I wrote it down just in case. <laughs> but what you want to do... Research purposes. <laughs> Guys, you want to find um, Teens in the Woods episode two? Okay. Uh, um, also the bo- writing, the writing beginning is kind of iffy because the girls are really bad actresses. But if you get to the part with like the dolls and the potato salad, it's great. It's like it's like a horror movie. You can skip the fucking porn. You don't need the porn. You can skip it. <laughs> the rest is great. <laughs> so it's a it's a horror movie that turns into a horror movie. Got it. Uh, yeah. Come for the yeah. porn, stay for the story. Yeah. <laughs> like, you have to keep in mind, when I found this, I was expecting to watch, like, a totally normal porn. <laughs> I was so wrong. I was so wrong. <laughs> oh, man. She, she went in for, uh, she went in for uh, It and came out with Cabin in the Woods. <sighs> yep. Which, wow. I still love that movie. I think it's just the most stupid, ridiculous ever horror movie and i love it probably because i think it's so bad and if we're so bad that you love us head over to patreon.com slash ritual misery show us that you give a fuck by giving us a buck or you can do as would you like to know who did and up their pledge to three dollars three dollars a show thank you very much would you like to know who and yes we would like to know who (laughs) <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Once again, that's patreon.com slash ritual misery. It is. It is. Hey, um, uh, go ahead, Crunchy. Can I, I'm going to sidetrack here for a second. Speaking of you guys being so bad that I love you or whatever. <laughs> um, I like where this is going. I don't know if I'm going to like the destination, but, but the trip <laughs> has been so fun so far. <laughs> So we all know that since South by is coming up, you guys have your thing on Thursdays that I'm pretty sure I'm not going to go to this year because it's not worth my vacation time from work. Um, And every year I get cut off and kicked out after like two beers. Yes, that's um, that has happened multiple times. 
Well, well, yeah. we 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 have some news for you. One, our uh, the it, it had it has been decided that our Thursday meetup will not be at Darwin's. Uh, we were going to go do a uh, we we're going to uh, it's going to be a, a karaoke, I believe, right, Kent? At the suggestion of of Tay Allen, a karaoke um, joint. I, I think I think that's the way it's going to go. Um, Except, not sure if ritual misery is going to make an appearance <laughs> at karaoke uh or at south by this year at all so uh when you final say ritual decision. misery do you mean the podcast or do you mean like you guys us both Aww. yeah yeah we're, we're looking to miss uh, uh south by so wasted for the first time in five years yeah uh, um so final final decision has not been made but it's not looking good yeah uh between uh between kent's work trips and the general lack of funds in my wallet um <laughs> to yeah, fly just a down. lot going on bad yeah uh bad timing and um bad money at the moment so yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll we'll i don't know i don't know we'll see if we don't go this year uh count on next year being uh ritual misery is going to make a make it a big deal next year for sure uh <laughs> But yeah, so whatever, yeah. Uh, I, I believe Tay is going to do a meetup of some sort uh, regardless of our presence. So we will definitely pass the word on uh, on where yeah. that's going to happen. Uh, I'll probably be at work. But wait, <laughs> there's more. I was going somewhere with this, I promise. <laughs> okay, yes. Uh, so a few months after South by last year, Amos posted pictures, right? Mm. Remember that? No, um, but that's not unlikely. Yeah, that sounds okay. right. Okay. Um, I saw the big group picture, and obviously I'm at the front because I'm like four foot nothing. <laughs> and first of all, I can't believe you posted that picture without my permission, because fuck you. I look literally, literally 12 months pregnant. They thought I was trying to give myself a miscarriage. That's why they cut me off, you motherfuckers. Nobody even wanted to say anything. It's the elephant in the room. Oh, jeez. Uh. <laughs> Find that picture. I am not exaggerating when I say 12 months. What, what the fuck is that? What, what, what. <laughs> Was this on Twitter, Facebook? Where did I post these? Oh my gosh! Now I'm concerned. Facebook. Ah, uh, see, I don't even have Facebook anymore. See, and not only did nobody uh, tell me, they did the opposite. Like Jerry was there, and he's like, "Crunchy, that outfit is really working for you. That looks good on you. You look great. You I guess, guys are so mean." So, no, <laughs> no. See, I'm, I'm kind of. I didn't see anything wrong with any one's appearance like if, if somebody showed up looking like a, a walking trash can or a uh i don't know whatever think of anything negative if i had that perception i would probably quietly tell that person like uh mm, i mean maybe you maybe you want to like you know fix yourself up i don't know <laughs> i did not notice that about anybody that was at darwin's that night or any other night for that matter so my bad. <laughs> oh, it's so bad, guys. It's so bad. Now, now I have to I have to find this picture because I <laughs> like I'm generally concerned. Uh, Media King nine hundred nine says, in his defense, Kit was drunk. <laughs> that's not an <laughs> thing well. Apparently, do. so was I, and that's probably a very likely explanation because the year before that, I just had surgery, so I was full of like the surgery gases, and I was super bloated. Yes. <laughs> so oh my gosh so this is the picture yeah i'm gonna guess yeah what well, okay i mean I, I, I look i i i guess i didn't really think sure. of, I, I i don't know yeah i mean we're all we're all our own worst critics right so when we see our own flaws we see them more than others that's the i mean the for for what it's worth tom Merritt looks like he's uh uh Looks like a confused four-year-old, so... Don't oh, shut your face. Seriously, guy, we'll take a poll of the audience. Would you say uh, 12 months pregnant or 13? <laughs> what would you give that? Um, th th this is the picture she's talking about. 
Let's see if I can, uh, I can go here and do this at least. All right, yeah. so so that's the picture she's talking about. That's the that's the picture of her concern. Um, hmm, I don't know. I I don't know. I guess I just figured that's that. I I don't know why I I, I wouldn't have noticed. I but I, yeah. I posted the damn picture. So, <laughs> damn it, Amos. <clears throat> I know, right. I know. Well, I'm I'm just a bad human. That's all it is. I'm just a bad human. <laughs> I'm just not, confirming what we already knew. Right. I'm just not a good person. All right. Let, let's see how good of a player you are at games. <gasps> okay. Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, kid's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kids games. Play with him. Play with him. All right. Crunchy, you are into travel. I'm sorry. Right? Even... Okay, do you okay, do you have fifty five unread notifications on your Facebook? <laughs> um me, me me? Yes. Probably. Is that what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Why even yeah. bother? Why bother? I, I that's just <laughs> it. I don't. Like I stopped using Facebook uh last month. Okay. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I took it off my phone, and I just keep forgetting to check it when I'm at home. So I, I don't, I don't, okay. I don't Facebook anymore. Okay. Sorry. Carry on. What's the game? All right. <laughs> so I've got a game. I'm calling it the State of Attraction. Oh. So uh, what I did was I found a website that lists the weirdest roadside attraction for every 50 state or all all of the 50 states. I am going to randomly select. A number, and then I'm going to read the description of that of the corresponding state's attraction, and then you will guess which state that attraction is in. Okay. Okay. Now, do we so, do, do do we get to second guess, or is this just a one, one person one guess? Like, what's going on here? I want to st- get these rules out ahead of time. Okay. Um. You know, what? so we can steal one chance at stealing. Okay. So if the person that I'm asking gets it wrong the mm-hmm. other person has a chance to steal okay the point. that's that sounds good all right we're playing all right, family so, feud yes so i'm i'm going to tell google to flip a coin um amos heads or tails uh tails <laughs> yeah uh, it is in fact tails do you want to go first or second uh i will go second i'll let the crunchy lead the way okay all right so i'm going to randomly choose um, I'm actually on numbergenerator.org if anyone wants to uh, see how I'm doing this, a little behind the scenes, where I'm having it choose a number between 1 and 50, and then I'm going to the corresponding number. I'm not going to read the numbers out loud because these states are in <laughs> alphabetical order, and it would be a very serious clue as to what the answer is. No, number, number 50, that's got to be Tennessee. <laughs> I'm good. I'm I'm good at numbers. Bad at letters. All right, crunchy. The first attraction. Here is your description. The world's largest tire. This 80 foot tall tire was once a working Ferris wheel during the World's Fair. The best thing about a tire this big is that you'll only get a flat if you run over, say, a skyscraper or two in your giant car. What state has the world's largest tire? Missouri. Amos, would you care to take a guess? I've seen this. <laughs> I just don't remember where. It was I I I swear it was somewhere in the Midwest like I w- Missouri's actually a really good guess. I'm going to go with um I'm going to go with Kansas. It is Michigan, in fact. Okay, definitely Midwest, at least. Loser. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right, Amos, this one goes to you first. Mm-hmm. It is. This is complicated. I have to keep flipping between tabs. Oh, so, my. Uh, dude, don't uh, get me started about complicated flipping <laughs> between tabs, you non-producing video motherfucker. All right, your <laughs> your attraction is the world's largest basket. 
This might look like a giant picnic basket, but it is actually an office building where people have to go to work every day. Right. Fingers crossed that giant bears don't exist. Hey, boo-boo. Right. I was going to say it looks exactly like the uh, Yogi Bear picnic, picnic basket. Um, picnic basket. I want to say it's like a... a, a I want to say it's Jersey, but I'm going to go... A whole bunch of shit. Squid's like just throwing random states out there, like in the chat room. He has no fucking idea what he's doing. Um, I'm going to go with Jersey. Yeah, why not Jersey? Everything is legal in Jersey. Crunchy. Where is the world's largest picnic basket? I'm going to go with Ohio, like 50 miles outside of Columbus. Oh, oh hold on. That failure sound was for me <laughs> because it is, in fact, in Ohio. Of course, MB would right. get that. <laughs> All right, Crunchy, yes. it is your turn to go first. Uh huh. So, yours is the Big Blue Bug. This mascot for New England Pest Control sits on their roof overlooking I 95. Thankfully, this termite is not alive. If he were, this state wouldn't last very long. What with all the feasting he'd surely do. So there were some clues in there. I-95. Yep. Where is the big blue bug? See, I-95 goes from Florida to Georgia to South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia. It doesn't go through West Virginia, I don't think. Um, skirts around D.C. into... Pennsylvania? Shit. Yeah, I think Pennsylvania. And then continues north through Philly. So I'm all about the talking out your answer, uh, but you're actually helping your... <laughs> that's, that's fine. You, okay. you, you think I'm afraid to lose one of these competitions? Come on. <laughs> I mean, you're used to it already, so... I am. Uh, M-Beam says Uranus, and I don't know if he means uh, Uranus or Uranus. Uh... I suppose if all of ninety nine of of I ninety five is going through your anus, you might have you, you might you, you might need some some pills for that or some uh, topical <laughs> suppressants. All I right. think he could really benefit from my uh, special announcement later. <laughs> um, um, I'm gonna go with Pennsylvania also because of the New England thing. Mm. That's Pennsylvania, right? Mm. Yeah. That's close-ish. Uh, M Beam says it's the Hershey Highway. <laughs> wow. Good job, M Beam. Uh, um, it, is, it is not Pennsylvania. Where do you think it is? Vermont. It is, in fact, Rhode Island. That's not even a state. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You you can't you can't be a state if you're smaller than the smell cloud of Kent's farts. All right. That's wow. That's very specific. <laughs> very. There specific. are cities bigger than that state. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right, Amos. Your attraction is the National Museum of Health and Medicine. Travel to this museum to see all sorts of medical oddities. There's the bullet that killed Lincoln. And even slivers of his skull. It's not for the squeamish, but it's undoubtedly cool. Uh, I'm going to go with Georgia. Georgia. Mm -hmm. yeah. Crunchy, you have 49 other states to choose from. <gasps> I have less than that, right? You said it was only one from each state? Yeah. So, so, so we can't right. use these? Yeah. So technically, yeah, she's so got like 46. Yeah, good point. You've got like 40. Five states to choose from at this point. Because at first I was thinking, like, I know Ohio has one that's a collection of all the weird stuff that people have swallowed. It's kind of like that, but I guess that wouldn't be it. Um, <laughs> where has to be one of the original, like, 13 colonies. Look, I don't know history. I'm pretending <laughs> I do, but I don't. Where, where did Lincoln die at? Would it be that state? <laughs> uh, he didn't actually die in a state, so no. <sighs> Really? Yeah, he died. It was a theater. He, That's he, it. He, he died in Ford's Theater. Well, actually, he died in a house across the street from Ford's Theater, which is about three blocks over from the White House and is in Washington, D.C., which is technically not a state. So it wouldn't count as <laughs> when he's 50. Well, shit. 
What state is Washington D.C. in? Look, I didn't think I didn't get to go on this field trip because we had the sniper that year, and my mom didn't let me go. Washington oh, D.C. Damn. is on the Potomac River, the Potomac River, which is in between Maryland and uh, Virginia. So yeah, it's 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 technically outside of any state boundaries. It's in the District of Columbia. Um, I'm gonna go with Maryland. <laughs> Maryland is correct. Yep. I figured it'd be uh, in Atlanta where the CDC is headquartered, but uh, I guess not. That'd be a good guess. All right, Crunchy, you are up first this time. Dun, dun, dun. Your attraction is London Bridge. Oh, I know this one. Did you know that the original London Bridge isn't in London at all? A section of the old bridge, which was built in 1830, was dismantled and transported all the way to this state, where it now spans Lake Havasu. It's a stunning local curiosity. Wow, you keep giving her all the good clues. Yeah, there's lots of clues in there. One very big clue. It's really not big. Read it again. It's really not that big. Unless okay. the name of the London lake Bridge. is the big clue, then no, I don't fucking know. Yeah, I'll just read the. I'll, I'll read one of the sentences. This one. This is the sentence that has the big clue. A section of the bridge, which was built in 1830, was dismantled and transported all the way to this state, where it now spans Lake Havasu. Mm-hmm. Utah. Nope. <laughs> Amos, do you got this one? Arizona. My it mom, is indeed in Arizona. My mom and stepdad were actually married in Lake Havasu, Arizona, and we visited this section of the London Bridge about six months after it was completed during that trip. Excellent. Very cool. Sorry. I finally get a point, though. Yeah. <laughs> about the time. All right. The I'm score is actually playing. two to one at the halfway point of our game. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, Crunchy, you are in the lead. Coming for you, Crunchy. This... This is an even numbered question, so it goes to you first. Uh oh. You get this number. Is it in in even number state? Uh I cannot disclose that yet. <sighs> Damn it. <gasps> All right. Does it have an even number of letters in the state name? Your attraction <laughs> is the world's smallest church. This teeny tiny church can hold only two people. And it floats on a lake in this state. In an age where bigger is usually considered better, this tiny chapel defies the norm. I would say, oh, shoot, is it Idaho or Montana? But I'm going to go in, I'm going to say somewhere a little wetter since it's on a lake. Let's go with, uh, Wisconsin. No. Crunchy. Texas. Church. You say is in Texas. It is actually in New York. Uh, That's not the Bible Belt. No. Uh, (laughs) Certainly not. That's why the church is so small. (laughs) (laughs) And it's still only half full on Sundays. (laughs) Right. (laughs) All right, Crunchy, this one goes to you first. You, uh, your attraction is Mammy's Cupboard. Mammy's this cupboard. controversial roadside stand was accused of being racist in the 1960s. The owners responded by lightening the skin of the woman after whom the tasty little dive is named. Word on the street is they have great apple pie. Mammy's Cupboard. This is actually pretty good because they say, oh, it's racist, so they had to lighten the skin. But then... <laughs> but, <laughs> but, right? But then like it, they like, made it more racist. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, Are you calling Michael Jackson <laughs> racist? <laughs> well, I mean... Um, Look, I don't each, know. To each his own. Um, yeah. But it, it, like, for, for it to be called out as racist to them, for them to do something about it, it's got to be... Like, it can't be too far north because then nobody would have cared. <laughs> and it can't be too far south because then nobody would have fixed it. So, 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> you got to be in the middle somewhere there, or that's or out west. Interesting deduction. There. <laughs> what do you say, Crunchy? Where is Mammy's cupboard? Kentucky. Kentucky. <laughs> Amos, what's your guess? Uh, I think she's on the right trail here. I'm going to go with Tennessee. <laughs> you, you know, Mississippi. You know we're just naming the most northern racist states we can think of, right? <laughs> well, I, feel like, I feel like people would call people Mammy in, like, <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> And whatever the fuck you just said that I agreed with. <laughs> right, right. Uh, uh, MJ Snow says, uh, am I crooked letter, crooked letter, I, crooked letter, crooked letter, I, hump back, hump back, I. <laughs> Haven't heard that in a while. It's been a minute. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, all right, Amos, this one goes to you. Okay, we're still at 2-1 her, right? Correct. Okay. All right, this one is world's largest set of drawers. This uh, mammoth chest of drawers was built to celebrate the town of High Point, or what is otherwise known as the home furnishings capital of the world. So what's <laughs> inside of these drawers? Probably giant underpants. Pennsylvania. <laughs> Crunchy. Montana. <laughs> is North Carolina. North Kakalaki. North Kakalaki. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. All right um, we- this one goes to Crunchy first. And it's a repeat. I have to do the number generator. No, you again. should totally ask again. Just see how drunk we are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm about as drunk as I always am at Darwin's. That's that's what I'll say. <laughs> She's ready to get kicked out of her own living room. <laughs> About one beer in and being told that you are inebriated beyond yeah. serving. Okay. Yep. All right, Crunchy, your attraction is the world's largest ball of twine. Oh. Originally, this ball started as a way to get rid of leftover twine, and now it's in all of the record books. While its shape has degraded as it has gotten bigger, this monstrosity still comprises about 8 million feet of twine. I should know this one. I've seen it. I've seen it. I didn't go, but I've seen it, like, <laughs> advertised. Um, it's one of those, them there middle states, right? Hmm. It's not a Minnesota. state. Minnesota. Okay, you are going with Minnesota. Yeah. Amos. But, but Minnesota's where the giant ball of twine was, or yarn was that the Weird Al went to see. Uh, yarn? Twine, yarn, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? I mean, they're similar. Yeah. Um, okay, so it's not Minnesota. Uh, let's go with... Um, Utah. Kansas. It's the, Kansas is home to the world's largest Kansas ball. and Utah are kind of the same, except one's flatter. <laughs> One is flatter. Yeah, they're both on the other side of Colorado, which is the, the real hot spot in the area anyway. All right, Amos, <laughs> this is your final chance to Uh-oh. tie. Uh-oh. You get not that one because we got another repeat. What are the chances... Again, I say you go ahead and say it hey, just to see if we can make hey, it. Hey, have you heard the new Backstreet Boys song? Not to my knowledge. How's it go? You, you just, what are the chances? Oh. I mean, it says that about five times in the course, so. I believe yeah. you. <laughs> I, right, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to believe you because I don't want to go through the torture of listening to it myself. <laughs> right. Yeah, don't do that. Don't so. do that. All right, Amos, this is the final uh, state's uh, 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 roadside attraction, the Spud Drive-In Theater. This massive potato sits outside of a movie theater in this state and has been attracting tourists for years. It might not be the biggest potato recorded or the oldest, but it's still pretty darn cool no matter how you slice it. 
the Spud Drive-In Theater. Is this an actual like potato, like a plant grown out of the ground, or is it just a big ass like? The description does not say. Hmm. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with uh, um, Idaho. Of course, the potato themed. Roadside attraction is going to be in Idaho. Kind of had to be. Yeah. Too easy. Too oh, easy. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, so that tied the tie. game actually at two apiece. Mm-hmm. Not too shabby. You guys got four out of the ten. Yeah. Considering that there's 50 states and a lot of these attractions are super obscure. So what do you have for tiebreaker? Um, I can do one more. And Crunchy, we're going to give you the honor of going first. So is this going to end in a tie or is one of you going to take this? All right. This I, is I, I the- say I say on the last one, uh, Crunchy's the guest, so she gets to go first. And then we just keep alternating states <laughs> named until we get it. I find a list of states right now because I'm <laughs> OK. Uh, I don't think this one will take very long. Crunchy. This is the Volcano Steam Vents. The next time you're in this state, make sure to check on these amazing vents that give off steam from a certain volcano. Stop and take pictures, enjoy the steam, and anything else you like, like seeing what happens if you toss a piece of paper into that hole. (laughs) The Volcano Steam Vents. Hawaii. Congratulations, Crunchy. You have won the game of the State of Attraction. In your face. You're number one. <laughs> I know. Right. <clears throat> All right. Um, look, the, the, the real reason we come on this show is, to, is, is basically to look at Crunchy's hair when she wasn't remembering that she was on and to find out what Crunchy's been doing lately. So uh, you've got a thing called localvacation.com that um, it's it's not your average travel site. Let's just say that. Is that is that fair to say? Is that does that I think I would that like works? To think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, tell us about it. What, what's going on? Why? First of all, why did you have a need for this site? And then tell us what the site actually is. I had a need for it because I get very easily bored and I get really antsy if I don't do anything new in a long time. And right now, I have like. Nothing to help me find this stuff. I have to do it all myself. And then, like, when I lived in a cornfield, I had my best friend, and we would just, like, get in my car and drive. Like, we would make instructions for how to get lost, and we'd just go find stuff. And, like, we used used Roadside America a lot, Um, and we'd make, like, a road trip of, like, we made a road trip of Michigan. We went everywhere that day in Michigan. Um, So, and then when I started, like, finding stuff here, like, I found stuff that was even more obscure than, like, Roadside America or Atlas Obscura or whatever. Like, there's some stuff that, like, would be genuinely hard to find by searching the internet. So, I just made the site that I always wish existed. Find a need and fill it. That's awesome. Um, go ahead, Kent. No, I was, I was, so I just wanted you to elaborate a little bit more. Um, so, you live near the city of Austin, Texas. So, there's a lot of things in here for Austin. Do you represent any other areas of the country on this site? A little bit. I have a little bit about Ohio in there. Um, mostly Columbus because it was my favorite city in Ohio. And I would like to represent like all of them if people would send stuff in. I definitely know somebody that said like six months ago he was going to send stuff in for um, Portland and he never did. <laughs> <laughs> so probably I, live a, I live in a, a, a well it it's called a city but it's, it's more like a like a small town of alamogordo new mexico and mm-hmm. there are some hidden gems in this town like the if town i if i wanted to contribute to localvacation.com what how would i do that should i just like you know uh, get you on my podcast and tell you about these sites or what, what should i do you could do that <laughs> kind of what you almost started doing um, <laughs> or or 
You could email the website at vacationlocal at gmail.com or there are forms to fill out on the website or since you all know me, you can just email me at like crunchy89 at gmail because that's how you all know me anyways. <laughs> I won't complain. <laughs> right on. And to clarify for the folks out there listening, so localvacation.com has a hyphen between the words local and vacation. So it's local-vacation.com. Yes. yes. Um, I was checking this out the other day and there, there's a lot in here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I plan on adding a little more before South By. That's because why I want to advertise it right now is because I know that everybody's coming from out of town for South By. Um, I, would... I know that my right now my drive through daiquiris are all in Pflugerville, but I know there are a few in Austin. So I'm going to like add those. I'm I... trying to figure out if I want to like if I can figure out how to make the, like the links, if I can have a list of categories and then have you click on one and it'll take you to that category, like how some mm. sites do that. Mm-hmm. I want to figure yeah. that out. Maybe yeah, I should like add little descriptions before you have to click on the link. I don't know. I'm working it out. Let me know. Let me know. It would be good. Yeah, and you've got you've got several categories in here. You've got like comedy, geeky, holistic, food, uh, drinks. You've got a you've got a you've got a category on here called mature slash age restricted. Uh, can you give us an idea of what we might find if we clicked on some of those links? Um. Some of it, like I saw, you saw K botanicals that might involve drugs. Um, <laughs> <laughs> obviously, they're advertised as botanicals because it's you know they yeah. have to. <laughs> it's Texas. <laughs> um, shaman modifications. That's like the tattoo place in Austin that does scarification and will like split your tongues and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's urban axe throwing, which that was new, so I added it. But I am so over this axe throwing thing now because it got <laughs> so popular so fast, and now it's everywhere, and I don't care. <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah. L- last time I was in Las Vegas, which was uh, uh, going on a year and a half ago now, yeah, axe throwing was everywhere. I had never seen it before, and then now, like, everyone has, you know, like, hey, come to the back of our yeah. shop. We'll let you throw axes. I but, yeah. the only time I've ever been tempted to throw something in any entertaining way has been there's a, a the, the ice house in uh, in Gunsan City in Korea uh, it, it, they give you a, a your cup is full of beer and the cup itself is made of ice like it's from it's formed from ice you know and mm. if you take that cup at the at the end of drinking it and you throw it and you hit a target you get a free beer. So the game is you go in there and buy a beer and then you see how long you can how long you can drink for free. And the kicker is the each each cup or glass or whatever, each each vessel, each drink vessel, uh, throws differently because not only is it formed differently, but also it melts as you're drinking. So they all weigh slightly different. It's, you never throw in the same thing Where twice. Where was this place when I was in Kunsan? Uh, you had to be a cool kid to get there, so you obviously didn't have any uh, chance. Damn it. I always get left out. Yeah. Um, a junior, uh, we, Junior's been on the show before. Junior and my wife and I went to it one night, and I think all three of us hit the first time, and we got free drinks. And then the second time, all three of us wildly missed. <laughs> well, I imagine that, that people's... Uh, throwing skills decrease the more that they've had. So. Yeah, and especially, I mean, it's it, it, literally, if you don't drink it fast enough, the the beer will water itself down by virtue of being warmer than the, the, the vessel. So you kind of want to drink it kind of quickly. Plus, it's good beer. Yeah. So, uh, so Crunchy, if you yeah. had a, uh, I guess, a dream city... Right, that you want to go visit, and you wish people would submit their their hidden gems of that city. What what would be what's number one on your wish list? I guess for cities that you would like to see out here. Not Anchorage. Not uh, Alamo. I don't have a specific city. I really want to go to California, and I would like to go to Cor- to uh, Portland. Mm. I have not made it very far west, actually, <laughs> and I well. want to. <laughs> Oh. I'll, I'll go ahead and throw one or two items from Alamogordo, New Mexico, and maybe <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> New Mexico is definitely closer than uh, than California and Oregon. So, it yeah, it's it's definitely closer and still not worth the trip. 
Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Yeah, I, I can vouch for that. There's, there's less than corn in New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't know. A lot of people like coming here to the White Sands National Monument. No, there's uh, um that meow wolf exhibit. Um, the what now? It's called Meow Wolf. It was designed by George R. R. Martin. Oh, okay, so that's in Santa Fe, which is like a billion miles. I think I'm closer to Austin than I am to Santa Fe. Okay, okay. Santa Fe is like probably, he's, I don't know, eight hours north of me. He's, he's, <laughs> he's closer to Alpha Centauri than he is to anything fun. I'm actually, so to put it in context for people, Alamogordo is actually pretty close to El Paso, Texas. Yeah, it's like an hour and a half, right? At most, yeah. Yeah. Uh, for like from, from uh, city limits to city limits, it's probably right about an hour. So, yeah. <laughs> I might have been through there once. I uh, passed by El Paso on my way to Bisbee, Arizona once by car. It was terrifying on that border. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Going through El Paso? Yeah. So um, you probably saw the signs for the thing. The thing the with a question. The experiment farm? The, uh, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Uh, but it's like there's thousands, literally thousands of these billboards along the highway that advertise the thing with a question mark. Oh, yeah, I think I did see that. You know what else I saw? I don't know, like, how close this is to your location. But, like, you, I was legitimately, like, on the Mexican border most of the way there. Um yep. And it kept looking like, you know, like, if you live in, like, the Midwest or, you know, a place where there's a fall, um, like I used to. And you have like the autumn leaves that fall and then they like all blow across the road at the same time. Like it kind of looked like that before I realized that it was really just like a million tarantulas. Oh my gosh. That I have <laughs> not experienced. In fact, that was a terrifying drive. Nor will I. No, uh uh-uh. uh. No, not, not happening. No. I've lived in New Mexico for like five and a half years now, and I've seen exactly one tarantula since I've been here. <laughs> which, which, which coincidentally is exactly the number of tarantulas I saw while living in Texas. And I lived, uh, I lived there a total for about five and a half years. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so, so we were on par. Yeah. 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 Um, I haven't seen a tarantula or a scorpion yet. Scorpions are kind of cute. Like, I don't know that I would even mind. Um, but no, I haven't seen one. <laughs> Took me forever to see an armadillo. And then I, I accidentally see- ran it over and <laughs> it uh, got up and walked away. Yeah. So, <laughs> most, I see quite a few scorpions here, like really small, like maybe, I don't know, maybe two inch long oh, scorpions here. Terrifying. But, but they're, I've never seen, I don't think I've, well, maybe once or twice, but I almost never see live scorpions. I always find them. Like when I like open the building on Monday morning, I'll see like you know one or two dead ones in the hallway or something. Mm-mm. But I never see them alive. Mm-mm. Where are they? <laughs> what are they doing? I I got to tell you the best thing. The best thing about living in Alaska is the fact that there's no cockroaches up here. <laughs> Flies only live up here for like three weeks in the summertime. Um, you have, you got to put up mosquitoes, but only only like one month out of the year. Um, there's, there's no tarantulas, like no, there's no big spiders. Mm-mm. No, that's, that's gotta be the best thing about living up here. I'll, I'll take the tarantulas. Uh, what I don't like is the black widows. Um, they tend to like, they leave people alone. They don't actually seek out people to bite. You have to like really be fucking with their, their space. Uh, but they are here and right. I hate seeing them every time. Or the brown recluse. No, no. Fuck spiders, dude. Just. Yeah. We don't get the brown recluse here. That was we, we had those in Florida pretty bad. Ugh. And um yeah, like sometimes like your your neighbor or your friend's dog would get bit by a brown recluse and and it went bye-bye. Well, I no, uh, I have yet to see like a dog die from it at in, all. But get, and that sounds cool. That sounds like a cool part of Alaska. But the other thing you have to keep in mind, you know how like a lot of people before they have their morning coffee, they're like don't talk to me or um you know, when they're hungry and they get hangry. Um, that's me every time it's like below 50 degrees. Yep. Long I'm distance. I'm a bitch. <laughs> I cannot stand the cold. I, I'm, I'm the same it's, way. I, in fact, I thought about talking about that in, in the uh, weekly recap because I am so tired of winter and we've barely had a winter in New Mexico, but I'm done with it. <laughs> yeah. I, 
done. It, it's it's gotten all the way to twenty four degrees today. Um, above or below? Above. Oh wow! Uh, we had frost like, on the cars this morning. So. Oh my god. Yeah. That, uh, mm. We nope. apparently it snowed the other day. I slept through it. But I saw the memes where people have like a spoon and they're like, I had to get out the Texas snow shovel. <laughs> <laughs> the best thing about snow in Texas is nobody has to work. Even like the emergency crews are like, mm, um, nah. I have to work. Yeah, but you work with <laughs> dead people. They can't complain. Uh, <laughs> families can. Uh, screw them. <laughs> oh, my they, gosh. Hey, it says it's supposed to snow in Hawaii. Uh, wow. Uh, oh, yeah, it was like well, the first time like ever in recorded history or something. It, it does snow there pretty re- regularly on uh, Mount Kilauea. Well, yeah, I mean, on top of the mountain, sure. Yeah. But, I mean, is that what we're talking about in this case? I don't know. It's, it's the biggest no. mountain in the world. Yeah. So. so, for the audience, I planned out, in honor of my site, I planned out the perfect date for everyone coming to Austin for South By. Oh. Let's hear it. It's perfect. It's exclusive. It's one day only. And it just happens to be the Friday before night attack, like the day before night attack. Yeah. Okay. So I planned it out a little bit. You just start out by going to the nice little oyster bar because oysters are an aphrodisiac and you're going to you're going to want that to warm you up. Hmm. Also, side note, you should probably wear your 2016 night attack shirt. If y'all uh, remember what that said. Yes, uh, Austin Night Attack Live. <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Austin Night Attack Live. Yes. Yeah. Important. Important. Um, <laughs> did I ever tell you guys about when I tried to make one of those for Orlando? No. We'll circle back around. <laughs> we'll come back around. All right. Um, okay. So wear your, your Night Attack 2016 shirt mm-hmm. and – Get all oystered and aphrodisiac up. Alcohol might help a little. This yeah. place does have like a espresso martini, which are to die for. Mm. Um, if you're not into mixed drinks, they have like live oak pilsners and everyone likes live oak here. It's a craft beer. Cool. And then you're going to, after dinner, you're going to make your way down to Soma Vita. It's a yoga studio. You don't like yoga. You're not flexible. Don't worry about it. Not important. The second Friday of every month, they have like super sex positive meetups. Um, And these range greatly. I've seen um, one class that was about masculine and feminine energies, essentially the differences between men and women and how you can use those differences to balance things out and make your relationship work. But then I've also seen um, classes on how to give a proper prostate massage. Um, They said it had a live demonstration. So, nice. Okay. The eighth, I had to go ahead and check what they were doing on the 8th, which keep in mind, if you want to see what's happening before you go, which I would highly recommend, there's a uh, meetup group for this. It's the Sacred Sexuality Meetup Group. Um, so on the 8th, they are having a live anal fisting demonstration. There will be people getting anally fisted there. They want to make sure you know that it will be two guys. So if that's going to upset you, don't go. Because clearly that's the uncomfortable part. <laughs> <laughs> the gender of the hand. Is oh my God. Can't, can't, why, why are we, why, why, why don't we have, why, why aren't we booked up yet? Uh, they, this is like, why, how do we not have plane tickets to go see this? Uh, would you, will you be my date? <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, so you guys oh, are going to come to South by now, right? Oh my you can't gosh! Not go to this. That that, that <laughs> definitely adds a uh, well. well I, would, I would say that's in the plus column. <laughs> I, I I would find it uh, very interesting. I think Kent would find it utterly cringy. But <laughs> <laughs> the idea of anal fisting it, it doesn't uh, gender aside. Um, right in front of your eyes. That is live porn. You get live porn viewing. Uh, just for you again this is one of those things that it's a community builder everybody that goes to see that is inexorably linked to each other from that point forward you are that much closer i think that's why the set the meetup is called sacred sexuality yeah what can bring you closer <gasps> media king 909 says putting the wood in tourism board <laughs> um i so he, 
here, here's a question I have. Okay. Now it's, uh -huh. I I don't know from personal experience, either giving or receiving, but I would imagine that anal fisting is, or, or fisting anything, is is something that, that takes considerable preparation and thought and and and, yes. and consideration. Yeah. Like like this is something that, that you know it, 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 you don't just you, you don't just hang out at a Seven Eleven waiting to be anal anally fisted. Like it, <laughs> like there, there's 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 you put yourself out there a little bit to even talk about something like that, let alone to, but, but to do it in public, what are these two dudes thinking? Cause you know, they already know, right? They already know they've been selected. Like, and what was the selection process? <laughs> that How wasn't where my head was going with the preparation. Um, <laughs> okay. So you guys are men. I don't, men are really bad about this. I don't know if you guys know this, but little secret, you can't just go shoving things in holes. You need to open them up a little bit. It fucking hurts. <laughs> so what exactly are we watching? Like, I might go if I get to see a bro job first. Like, I'm down <laughs> for that part. And then I'll just leave before the fisting happens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm sure this isn't like a 30-second demonstration. This is probably like there's got to be some buildup. How much uh, foreplay are we watching? Like, that's the part that I'm, like, confused about. <laughs> I mean, what if this is the foreplay? I... <sighs> like, if they're just exhibitionists, so they, like, the foreplay is the fact that there are people there? What What, what if they have, like, specific requirements? Like, you're going to, you're, you're volunteered to do this, and we've chosen you to be one of the two men that are going to go up here and do this, but it can't be pornographic. It has to be informational, so no jizzing on yourself like <laughs> you, you know like in, in, well, in, yeah, in, then the guy then the poor dude's got uh, 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 performance anxiety he's gonna go up there you know and he's like an exhibitionist anyway so it's kind of like his thing to have people watch and then all of a sudden he just gets too excited and gets kicked out of anal fisting like <laughs> I can see this going How terrible you have to be to get kicked out <laughs> Right. That's, that's, that's why I there's questions. I think part of the uh, sacredness part is that you you don't waste your sexual energy by ejaculating. You injaculate. That is the uh, male term for faking an orgasm, I think. But, yeah. <laughs> injaculate. Okay. That, that's the most made-up shit I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. It's it's out there. It's a thing. Oh no, oh, jeez. Oh my god. I now now I have a whole new incognito window to open. Okay, that's <laughs> yeah. Like Amos has been taking notes this entire episode. Are you guys ever gonna have me back on your show after this? Uh, um, yeah. What are you doing next week? <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would say that the, the likelihood has has gone up considerably. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, nearly a hundred percent. Yeah, it's what, you were coming what, on anyway. So whatever, this, yeah, like your stock went up. So. The, the the chances of you coming back on were uh, one hundred minus X, where X was ever increasing or decreasing number towards zero. That would never just quite get there, you know. But and we might have just gone a little bit higher than that. So, um, yeah. okay, cool. Uh, and Beam says, "Why do I have that episode of Dirty Job stuck in my head with the cows and the really long poop gloves?" Yeah, I mean, understandable. Fair understandable. enough. Um, a, you want to know the worst part? I found this and I was so amused. So I was gonna, I was gonna send my coworker a link to this, but the Meetup.com app sucks really bad. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I clicked the share button and I clicked send in Facebook Messenger because that's how he he doesn't text. He just uses Messenger. So I did that, and then it pops up. So I look at what it sent. It didn't send the link. It sent the title. It sent the words, join me at anal fisting. And I'm like, oh, this just got really awkward. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my God. That, actually. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, um, if people want to, uh, actually, uh, Squid says, uh, let, let, you know, let him know when you hit L.A., he'll, he'll uh, go hit the Museum of Death with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, I'm sure I'm sure Squid knows quite a few things around LA that most people probably wouldn't want to acknowledge. Um, if people want to RSVP that they're going to come see you at this anal fisting and they want to join you on this adventure, how can they get a hold of you? What's the easiest way? 
everywhere. Snapchat, Twitter, local vacation. <laughs> vacation local at gmail.com, actually. My Twitter's Crunchy89. My everything is Crunchy89, actually. There we go, because she is uh, not 89 years old. That's why. Um, I was born in 89. <laughs> and again, that is local-vacation.com. Yep. Uh, you all live in a place that has things. Mm-hmm. Crunchy wants to know about them. Add them at local-vacation.com. And I dare say that the more niche, the better. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I think that's kind of the yeah. like the mission of this site. Yeah. Things don't, that don't don't be don't be pointing towards major tourist attractions. Point towards that shit that you only found about. You lived in the city thirteen years and you only found out about it because you were too drunk to climb up the stairs one night. Should, give <laughs> us that place. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. and bonus exactly points for that. describing how you discovered it. Yeah, it, it, well, bonus points for uh, for telling us where you got that drunk. <laughs> and that, yeah. All right, Ken. How about you, man? Yeah, uh, Del Noche everywhere. Uh, Twitter, uh, Del Noche was already taken, so I'm RM underscore Del Noche there. Um, Del Noche 77 in certain places. But if you just search Del Noche, you're probably going to find me on just about any platform. There you go. Chat. And I am also not on, well, actually I am on Snapchat and I fucking hate it. I don't even, I haven't used that in over a year. Um, I'm not on Facebook any, well, I'm on Facebook, but I don't use it. Uh, what else do I, am I on, but I don't use like all the things you can find me on Twitter <laughs> at Ethan Kane, E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. You can find the show on Twitter at Ritual Misery, R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-R-Y. And of course you can catch us live. Um, mo- usually on Thursdays, this week was a little special cause Kent's, uh, Kent. <laughs> Because <sighs> Kent doesn't care about his podcast more than his girlfriend. Is that what happened? <laughs> we'll, we'll go with that. That sounds like a likely answer. Um, but you can find us most Thursdays at 7 p.m. Pacific on, on uh, twitch.tv slash ritual misery. And thank you so much to Kevin and McLeod. Wait, I got to hit my little buttons here. I'm so not good at this. Sorry, did you say Kevin the McLeod? Yes, Kevin the McLeod. Kevin uh, of Clan McLeod. Yes, uh, for allowing us to use his music and for the pre-show music. And thank you for listening, for Kent, for me, for Crunchy, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. See ya. Way early. Whatever. Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y.